Right, I've got to say BIM, why not? Hey BIM, guess what? Um, <laughs> as you know, I own a shop and I do, um, amongst many other things, comic books. And the comic books I do are generally Marvel, uh, DC, and then I do like the compilation books where they put the stories all together. Um, and I do all that kind of thing. So, you know, it's great. But I was never into them when I was a kid. I was into, well, first when I started was things like Beano Dandy and a comic called Whoopee, which was um, interesting. <laughs> and the bookkin billionaires in it, who were basically the Dingles who won millions. Uh, I think it was a rip off of the, um, what was that? 60s TV show uh, where they had all that money. I can't remember what it was called now. But anyway, it was a rip off of that and a few other bits and pieces. And then I grew up a bit and I got very, very excited because there was a new comic coming out and it was rough and tough action and it was uh, for boys. And I was a boy and although I didn't like rough and tough and action, I thought it was a bit more manly and a bit more butch than the stuff I was actually reading, uh, which was, well, Beano and Dandy and stuff like that. And I say reading, I use the term loosely. Uh, it's just, look at the pictures, really. But in fact, to be fair, I didn't do much reading until uh, the event that I'm about to describe. Anyway, this comic came out and I went to my local news agents and I said, excuse me, have you got blah, blah? And he went, what? I went, have you got blah, blah? Uh, that's all the name of the comic. I'm just building up the suspense, even though you've seen the thumbnail. And he went, no, um, I didn't think anyone would want it. And I went, well, I want it. I don't want to be little, tiny. And he went, oh, I'm get it for you for next week. Uh, well, yeah, okay, but I kind of want this week's. He said, well, have you tried somewhere else? So I went somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else, somewhere else, all around the town, every shop in the town, and I couldn't find a single copy of it. So I went back home and I was... I wouldn't say fuming, I was more upset. And my stepdad, who I never really got on with, um, he actually said to me, well, why don't we try the neighbouring town, which was Ashton under line. He says, uh, you never know, you might find, you know, you might find it there. And I was like, no, you know, like stroppy. I wasn't even, I wasn't a teenager, but it was like stroppy teenager, oh, can't be arsed, kind of thing. He went, no, no, come on, get in the car, we'll take you. So me and my stepdad, we drove, you know, three miles, four miles, whatever it was, to the nearest town big town and um, they parked up near the bus station and I went into the news agents of the bus station and uh, behind the counter was actually a girl I knew uh, same age as me or a little bit older and um, she'd been in hospital when I was in hospital and we got to know each other and it was like oh what are you doing here and she said oh my dad owns it and I'm working here because it's Saturday and I went oh right okay then um, have you got this blah blah and and she went oh I don't know I'll have a look so she went and had a look and they just come back with it and this is the very blah blah that she come back with. This is a comic called Bullet, and this changed my life. <laughs> it sounds dramatic, but it's not. And here's why. So this was it, this was Bullet. And uh, look at the cover. I mean, look at that car and it's smashing through a wall or something and it's not got a scratch on it. And there was free stuff as well. I think it was the free stuff I was more interested in. Even though, ironically, I don't wear jewellery uh, to this day and never have done, really. Um, the ring that you got was basically um, a piece of soft aluminium. Um, and then it's uh, stick-on embossed symbols. Basically, it comes with some stickers that you stuck on it. And then when you ripped them off, you stuck another one on and it lasted about about half a day um, and the date was February the 14th 1976 or oh, thereabouts and this was life-changing for me so we opened it up and it says welcome to uh, this big new story paper packed with action and fast and furious every week and then the hero is this guy here he's fireball to be fair, I thought it was a bit of a weirdo. Uh, my name, as you can read, uh, Fireball is my name. You can read about me in a super thrill action story starting on the centre pages. I'll look at these other stories. Rough, tough action stories. So we had Smasher, no idea what that was. Three Men in a Jeep and something called Twisty and Vic's Vengeance. And then it tempted us. Uh, free initiative number two, uh, Survival Folder. Um, 
tell your pals about this great new paper and the super fun gifts to come as well. And in episode three, we'll snap together model planes, which were dreadful, I'll be honest with you. Um, and then uh, terrific prizes you could win. Uh, look at this. You've got a camera, which is um, basically a cheap version of the Kodak Extra 110 camera, uh, a radio, uh, a super quartz watch, a fireball T-shirt, and a pocket calculator, which was probably worth more than all the rest combined at the time. Uh, find out how next week. And then you go to the next page and it says, this is where the action starts. So you read it and it says, trouble follows explosive experts, Red Rag Rag Raglon and his friend, Pal Ferret. And his friends, oh, start again. This is why, to be fair, I couldn't read. This is why it was life-changing. I couldn't read properly when I bought this. But because the stories and the drawings look so good, I actually learned how to read through this comic. And that's how it changed my life. So we'll start again. Trouble follows explosive expert Red Reagan and his pal Ferret wherever they go. And the Middle East oil state of Tabonia is no exception. So there he is. He's having a fight. Just when I was getting warmed up, Ferret. Uh, and then he says, Red, break it up. Scarper, here comes the fuzz. Oh, and then he says, just when I warmed it up. Uh, I didn't, obviously they didn't get away because... Stuck in the local nick, all because of a friendly argument. Nice and peaceful, though. And then all of a sudden, just outside the town, a sinister glowing bubble emerges from the sea. And it's Smasher will destroy. And look at that. It's a robot. And it says there, from the bubble comes a terrifying man-made metal monster. Smasher. So I couldn't wait to turn over the page, even though I didn't know what it was saying at the time. Um, what's all that noise? Uh, says Ferret. Can't see a thing, but something big is happening, says Red. Um, and then you've got here, the thing is tearing up the whole rig, tearing the whole rig apart. And then, oh no, it's coming ashore. It smashes everything in its path. Hence it got its name. And then, red, red, it's like something out of a nightmare. And it's heading our way. Bullets, our bullets do not harm him. Look at it, big robot. And then it smashes through. Look out, it's walking right through the wall. So the, are they going to escape? Red, can anything stop it? I'm going to find out. I'm going to take this rifle for a start. Is there a dead person there? Yeah, there's a dead person there. There he is. Uh, R.I.P. Um, the robot must have some direction-finding mechanism. I'll aim for its head. So they run past it. The bullets have no effect, but now it knows we're after it. Run, ferret. That's what I was doing when I was playing a game recently. Uh, attack the thing, and then it would know I was there, and then come for me. It singled us out, and that could be its downfall. I'm going to use the giant digger against the robot. I don't believe anything is indestructible. Maybe not, but sure looks tough. Come on, you metal moron. The odds against you are against you now. This time, weight and power are on our side. And then he ports. Fools, nothing stops Smasher. We'll see about that, Ferret. Jump when I tell you. Leap for your life. And then it goes, destroy, destroy, destroy. Now jump. I've made the smasher step backwards. The brute's uh, down in six fathoms of water with the digger on top of him. That If that doesn't stop him, nobody, nothing will. Phew. And we're still alive. The metal fiend has been destroyed. Hey, look. Something's moving the digger. It's raised up. And below the surface, Dr. Doom to smash you, return little one immediately. And he goes, smash it, obey, because he's a robot. And then we get to meet Dr. Doom. The giant robot returns to the bubble. Come, my little one. I think we have sufficiently demonstrated the extent of our power. It's time the world learnt of my plans. 
There he has her. This is Doctor Doom, master calling, a master of the Smasher, calling Tabania and the world. I intend to rule nations, govern the whole globe from pole to pole. Either obey me or face the onslaught of the Smasher. You have your choice. So we didn't destroy that thing. And it's a tool of some power-mad fanatic. Meanwhile, this videotape from Smasher's TV scanner shows me an enemy who could prove to be troublesome. He and his friend must be destroyed. Oh my God, it's Reglan and Ferret. So kill Reglan. Or it smashes orders to, uh, or it smashes orders as it rips through San Francisco next week, and then <laughs> you had other things as well, including a bit more factual stuff like flights of the unknown, uh, the statue of Alcott and Brown at Heathrow, and there were some of the pioneering fighters of the day, or or not fighters, and then we had criminal in the making or soccer star of tomorrow, Twisty. Um, it was a young lad who was basically getting beaten up by everyone um, and then ended up finding that he could play football really well because of his dis disabilities or whatever it was he had, which made him hobble around. Uh, but of course, it got him into shed loads of trouble uh, and he had to basically run away. And then uh, a tale of terror from Solomon Knight. And these were like one offs of what I can remember. So you get one story that may last um, one episode or two episodes or whatever. But uh, I don't think I even really read these, to be fair, because I wasn't that interested. I want to get to the main feature, which I ended up finding out was actually um, um, Smasher. But anyway, I, I digress. Um, and then this was a Survivor. Some young lad um, with his mum and dad uh, flying along. Uh, end up in a plane crash or a bomb goes off or something, I can't remember. Um, and before they know it, oh no, it's not just, it's just him um, in the plane. And then the plane crashes and he basically has to survive. He's in the middle of nowhere, doesn't know where he is. And everyone else thinks he's dead, uh, even though they don't find his body. Um, and then, whoa, look at that double page spread. That is Smasher, who's racing cars. And then he gets a, a message from MI5 and he has to go off course to go and solve the dish and the mystery, whatever it is. Basically it was James Bond. His thing was fireball fire, mystery solved, problems leaked, lost things found, crooks straightened out, anytime, any place, but only dangerous jobs accepted. And he thrives on thrills. He lives for danger. He's fireball. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the comic ran for well over 100 issues. And uh, every week, uh, Fireball had some spectacular adventure to go on. This one he looks like he's in the Alps or something. Um, and he always obviously won, otherwise he wouldn't be in the next issue. There were a few cliffhangers as well. Um, but yeah, it was it was good fun. Quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it anyway. So there you go. And then again, the other weird thing about this comic, and I thought it was weird at the time as well, was the fact that not only did it have good stories, Punch Up in Paris next week, can't wait. And it's got some factual stuff as well. So talking about fast cars, readers, take a look at these record breakers. And obviously this is 1976. So the, uh, what's it called? The jet powered 37 feet long bullet on which, uh, bullet on wheels is Blue Flame with Gary Galblich at the wheel. It grabbed the world land speed record uh, for the USA in 1970, a fantastic 631.37 miles per hour and no one's beaten it since. No doubt someone has beaten it since. But anyway, this was this is history, I suppose. And then you had this one here, uh, which was uh, uh, Gaston Lichazo's Lobot, who started off the record chase way back in 1878, which uh, his electric-powered vehicle reached uh, 39.24 miles an hour. And then, of course, uh, we had um, Donald Campbell, uh, the late Donald Campbell, 
Um, and then Donald Campbell again. Uh, and a crash. America Craig. Uh, what was it? Breedlove was spinning along one fine day when his car at stone. He ended up in a lake. Unscathed. Which wasn't how it ended up for Donald Campbell, let's be honest. Well, it wasn't a lake. And then, next thing is three men in a Jeep. So basically, uh, you've got these three renegades who um, end up ending up together through, you know, various different things. And uh, they end up getting a Jeep. And before you know it, they're off on adventures, which last again for about 100 issues. There he is picking the Jeep up, put it on its wheels, off they go. And loaded up, they are taking over the world. Don't forget though, you could be a fireball like me with your own two fireball calling cards, a great wallet, super fireball pendant, and a, a special message from me and the secret story of how I became fireball. Find out how next week. Now I did, and somewhere I've still got the medallion. It's horrendous. However, I will wear it for you. Um, Vic's Vengeance. Young Vic Mason's trial of revenge, trail of revenge, in uh, London's ganglands. Now, I didn't really read this one particularly, but the basic story is what I can gather. Um, uh, Vic uh, and his dad um, see a guy getting his um, market stall completely trashed. Uh, Please come. Everyone says, oh, I didn't see anything. He's like, like Vic says, I, I saw everything. What are you on about? Uh, and they're like, uh, no, nope, don't tell anyone. You have to keep it quiet. You know, it's blah, blah, blah. Protection rackets, protection racket. Um, and he goes upstairs in bed sulking like you do. What's wrong? I don't care. You're protecting protection money. Uh, he says, really? Your uncle's told you that? So he goes downstairs, has an argument with his uncle, which if you see there, Vic's actually listening in on. Um, and then there's a big fight and he kicks his uncle out. Uh, and then later on that night, or early in the hours of the morning, the shed is ablaze. And... Um, all the stock is in the shed. So dad goes in there and Vic says, no, dad, don't go in. But he has to go in. Oh, no, one of the fall, uh, one of the walls has fallen in. Dad's trapped in there. And then it's like the tank. I wonder. So he gets an axe, which I don't know where he's got it from. Uh, if only I can split it open in time, it should dampen the fire long enough for me to get dad out. But it's too late. The roof has collapsed. Dad, oh, no. Dad. And then literally it goes straight. And so a few days later, I'm sorry, lad, it might not have happened if only I'd been there that night. And then, because uh, the the bubble, the bubble bit there is even thinking, he's not saying this, he's thinking that. Um, and then it says, he doesn't know I overheard uh, the row between him and dad. Uh, I bet he's not, he or the deans were responsible for the fire and I'll prove it. And then, of course, the deans are the, um, the the gangsters. So what do the gangsters look like? Well, they look like typical 70s gangsters. Uh, Vic, meet Bobby and Fred Dean. It's a shame about your dad, kid. Too bad he died before he could tell the police the number of that hit-and-run van. Yeah, but it's too late now. We hear the owner has gone abroad for good. They both talk the same because they're twins. And then it goes, take my advice, Vic. Forget all about it. Uh, forget it, forget it, no, forget it all, and let's make a fresh start. I'll never forget it. I'm going to make those thugs pay for what they've done. Uh, and then Vic is alone in his fight against the Deans. Or is he? More thrills next week. And then don't forget, get another free gift next week. And you also meet Wonder Man. So... Uh, all in Bullet, 7P, published and printed by um, DC Thompson & Co, um, 1976, on sale Monday, the February the 16th. So guess what? Monday, February the 16th came, and my news agents nearby had actually saved me a copy. And he got it for me, and I got all the free gifts, although I don't know where they are now. And the story began. Although it does say there, look at that, not actual size. So even then it had a disclaimer. It was, it was probably about that big, to be fair. I can't remember. I don't think I've still got it. I might have it. I don't know. I didn't throw stuff away when I was a kid, to be fair. But anyway, that's enough of that. If you want more, 
just give me likes and comments and I'll uh, see if I can do some more for you. Until then, take care, look after yourselves and I'll be seeing you. Goodbye.